Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessToTrade.com. Hope everybody is doing well. Hope everybody had a, a great uh, Monday of trading. If you are brand new to the channel, guys, thank you very much for tuning in. We really, really appreciate um, your uh, viewership. Uh, all we ask is take a second uh, to like uh, like the video if you find value. Uh, subscribe, take this journey along the side with us, uh, and share. Share with your friends uh, and pass the word of technical analysis. So let's rewind, right? If you watch the weekend video, uh, we put in three days, right? Three days in a row of lower highs and lower lows, and we closed right at the five-day moving average. And the coolest part about trading, and I've always said this is, you need to be always prepared on both sides of the market, right? Because we just don't know. We're not trying to guess uh, the closing price the next day. We're just trying to win our intervals. Again, we'll get to the pivots in a second. We know we talked about uh, we talked about the Amazons of the world, the Disneys of the world. That doesn't make a difference. Everything everything is is, is ripping. We'll get to the individual uh, plays in a second. But the key is you're always prepared on both sides of the market. Uh, you're not trying to be right. You're trying to be prepared because again, if you walk into any single trading session just one sided, you're going to get run over. And you know, I was watching this this morning's plan was because we gapped up again. Uh, this morning's plan was well, let's see if we actually confirm the five-day moving average from Friday, right? Because again, if we did, we were going to start really, you know, drifting lower. And the craziest part about, uh, you know, technical analysis, and this is the most simplistic way of looking at it, and, and, I've, and I've said this numerous times, a market or a stock or an ETF, it cannot go lower until the market takes out the previous day's channel. A stock cannot go higher unless it takes out the previous highs on the previous day's channel. And we were prepared. My initial uh, preparation for the day was watching the downside of the market. As you can see here, we talked about this on the weekend video. Guys, watch the 423, watch the 423, watch the 423 level. Uh, the cues never took out, right? Never took out the five day, never took out the previous day's range, uh, reclaimed the previous day's highs and just started screaming once again. And everything that looked like it was about to roll over if the queues started rolling over, they woke up just like with it. You know, here's a perfect example, right? We were watching the video and the video closed right at the five day moving average. I was watching it this morning. I go, hey, listen, if this thing starts losing Friday's channel, the 605 70s level, this thing could get hit. Yeah, that doesn't work anymore, right? As, as aggressive as, as aggressive, and of course, I'm talking now tongue in cheek, but as aggressive as the market was in 2023 and the NASDAQ composite was up 54%, it feels like things are more exaggerated. And granted, it's only a, a full month into the new year, but it, it feels like the moves in 2024 are much, much more exaggerated. People are chasing more, uh, like we've been saying throughout the first three weeks of the year, fund managers are playing catch up, right, to the price action, what we're seeing. And no matter what happens, this market is just an absolute on fire. And it's not just, you know, last year, the whole thing was, well, the market's going up on seven stocks. It's not, right? You got the S&P all-time highs. You got the Dow all-time highs. You got the NASDAQ all-time highs. It's not seven stocks, right? It's not seven stocks. And oh, by the way, six of the seven, uh, six of the seven are doing very, very well. One is still underwater, although it did have a dead cat bounce. So we'll, uh, we'll get to that uh, in a second. Uh, after the close today, uh, SMSI, as you can see here, uh, has come out with earnings uh, last week. They uh, guided higher today. They just basically reiterated uh, the higher guidance uh, on their uh, on their uh, earnings release, and the stock is up another 35 points after the close. And guess what? Everything is ripping with it. Nvidia is up another, you know, is up another another seven uh, after the close. AMD, who is actually weak today, literally the whole day today. Uh, it looked like it was about to fall apart, but you, you can see it never took out the previous day's range. Uh, it, you know, it woke up as well. You know, Meta continues to go out of its mind. Microsoft, it, there wasn't even a pregnant pause on that 400 level. It goes crazy. And just to give you an idea how strong this technology market is, especially 
Apple today at one point lost its 50 day moving average and it, it got so aggressive, the buyers came in so aggressive at the bottom of the range that it reclaimed the 50 day moving average and actually took it higher. So again, despite Apple losing the 50 day and you turn around and say, well, that's it. Now the market is going to, you know, to come in. Apple's, you know, a, definitely a bellwether uh, in the technology space. The market continues to get bid up. Uh, Amazon, we've been talking about Amazon nonstop, uh, especially off the uh, off the top of the channel here. This is the highest close in the whole formation, about $4 from the all-time highs move in the last three days. Uh, everything looks, you know, just super good. You have Google. Uh, Google continues uh, to make highs. Netflix, uh, after its earnings, continues to go nuts. Uh, and I'll give you guys some names. Uh, I'll definitely give you guys some names to watch for tomorrow. There's a slew of of really good setups for tomorrow as long as the market continues uh, to uh, to go upside. What's crazy is the, mo the more I think about it, the more I think about it, tomorrow is the start of a super week, right? A super week of technology earnings. Last week we had uh, Netflix, we had IBM, and we had um, Netflix, IBM, and Tesla, right? Two of them uh, did really, really well. Tesla was the other one who didn't. Uh, tomorrow, we had SMSCI today. Tomorrow, we have AMD, Microsoft, Google, and Starbucks. What's going to happen if Microsoft and Google and AMD just completely explode? What is this? NASDAQ going to go to 20,000? So just a lot of euphoria. And usually, you know, usually when the market gets this euphoric, people start getting defensive. I'm, you know, I'm always looking, I'm always looking out for the previous day's range to lose just because I've been through the euphoria so many times that it's, you know, you could give back two, three weeks worth of performance, but the problem is the market is not losing the previous day's range and continues to be just incredibly, incredibly strong. That's the best way in the most simplistic way uh, to talk about it. So let's talk about today's pivots, right? And, and, and again, the, the, the challenge, right? The biggest challenge of the day is always finding the name that's not super extended. But as we were joking around the webinar today, Hell, you don't even have to you don't have to look at charts anymore, right? And, and I was joking when I said this, but I go, any stock that's red in the morning is buy, it'll be green by the afternoon. And as much as we joke around, hell, that's kind of what's going on right now. And just again, incredible, incredible run in 2023. It has spilled over very, very uh, you know, uh, exaggerated in 2024. Is it gonna be like this for the rest of the year? You know, your guess is as good as mine. But again, like we say, you know. One day at a time, right? One day at a time, one trade at a time. Don't try to guess. Don't try to outsmart the market. Don't try to be smart on social media. I, I, I'll tell you one thing, guys. The last four days, last three days, I've been off of Twitter through, through, through the trading day. I couldn't do it anymore. I just really couldn't do it anymore. You have 16, 18-year-olds outperforming what I've done in 24 years in one week. Uh, it, it's just, it got too much already. It got incredibly too much. So I've literally got off of Twitter uh, through market hours uh, from the last three days. And I'll tell you, it's the, the most unbelievable feeling, just not even dealing with the noise, the nonsense, the stupidity. It's amazing what you can do is actually concentrating on the stocks in front of you. Hell, you want to go back onto uh, the Twitter, this one, that one, uh, after the market closes, that's fine. But I'm telling you, try it, guys. One of the best best decisions I've made was getting off of Twitter during the middle of the day, uh, and it's you, you can really start seeing the market uh, very very well when you uh, omit the noise. So let's talk about it, right? Let's talk about it. Uh, ARDX finally got above 938. 930. We've been talking about ARDX for a couple of days. Uh, 938 rejected twice. Needs to confirm the macro chart again. Not a huge move yet, but this is the highest close in this whole formation. Had this big big run had a three-week consolidation, finally got above the 938. As you can see, it's only up, you know, six, seven cents. But the point is, this is the highest close of the whole formation. If today, if tomorrow confirms today's channel, you should see another leg up. So keep an eye on this thing for tomorrow. Tesla, right? Tesla. As much as I believe we will retest the 180 lows, like I said, there's going to be a dead cat bounce. Today, we had a two-sided setup and it almost worked perfectly on the two-sided. So here is the two-sided setup. 187 was Friday's highs and the pre-market highs. It got rejected there three times. If you look at the 60-minute view, you'll kind of see what I'm saying here. So here's the Tesla 60-minute view, right? Here was Tesla 60-minute view. So as you can see here, Friday's high was 186.78. You see that, guys? 
right? 186.78. The pre-market high got rejected twice at 87. So this is where I got the 87 from. So I said 87, the pre-market highs needs to build for a potential test for 189, 190 push, right? So it got there. It got to 189, 190 perfectly, right? Congratulations. We got this thing long to the long side. Here is the second part of the equation. Once it gets up there, right, you can flip short. So I went short at the top of the range. It was perfect, right? I got sh I got literally short at the top of the range in that 89.70s level. It only went down like 30, 40 cents, right? Only went down 30, 40 cents. Obviously, I wasn't going to trade this thing for 30, 40 cents. Um, it came back in, stopped me out, break even, uh, and then went up a little bit, went up a little bit, went down like $3 and closed up the highs. Here's kind of how I want to play this thing for, for tomorrow, right? Here's kind of how I want to watch this thing for tomorrow. You see this range here, right? It still has room to the next supply. I want to see if we can, if we can get that, if we can get that test of the gap down candle, if we can reclaim the gap down candle, I want to see if we can get a move into the five day supply. And if we get, if we do get a move into the five day supply on the long side, I would actually like to do the same thing we did today, kind of sell it at the top of the range and then get short off the five day to see if it comes back down. I'll see. But again, we'll, we'll talk about it tomorrow at morning strategy. But today it worked out uh, pretty decent. I know some of you guys caught both sides of the trade. I caught it long and then it would have been nice. If we would have got the big move down, but it is what it is on Disney. We talked about this last night on the video uh, 9590 9651 macro needs to build. Beautiful breakout on Disney. Congratulations for you guys who caught it. Here was the 9590. Here was the 9650 macro. Closed right at the highs at 9750. Disney uh, looks really, really good. Uh, again, I was watching for NVIDIA. Folks, again, don't be afraid to be wrong, guys. Do, in this business, don't be afraid to be wrong. You have a game plan. It only confirms if the price action confirms. If the stock doesn't get there, who cares, right? Who cares? Let the stock go 200 points higher. The point is you're trading for the, you're, you're waiting for the confirmation of the channel not to be right. Uh, I was waiting for the 60570s on NVIDIA. Obviously, it's nowhere near that. And the stock it just absolutely exploded. Uh, Amazon continues breakout move. Uh, 167, he needs to confirm uh, Friday's channel. Here is Amazon. Amazon obviously uh, broke out a couple of days ago off that 5720 that we talked about, but it got above the 60s, 70s, and traded right to the highs of the day uh, of 6130s. I believe that is it. Oh, Airbnb, I'm sorry. Airbnb had a nice little pop. Uh, 151.50s, we talked about Airbnb as well on the, on the weekend video. It needs to confirm huge daily confirmation. Here is Airbnb, right? Took out this whole channel here, took out the 5130s, traded up to 5340s, and this is now the highest close in the whole formation. If this thing starts getting back above uh, today's channel, this thing can wake up as well. Again, another example of the euphoric nature of this market, SoFi, right? Look at SoFi. When was the last time you saw SoFi go up a dollar fifty? Right? It's absolutely incredible market. It's just it's just juiced up. Any good news is just driving this market higher. The key now and the hardest part about it is. You know, continue to find value at the middle of the bottom ranges, but nothing's at the bottom of the ranges anymore. So again, the task is finding good value. The, it's again, a little bit easier uh, said than done, but again, that is our job. And let me give you guys some ideas, right? Let me give you guys some ideas for tomorrow. Uh, stocks that are just starting to come out of the channels, whether they got hit, whatever the case may be. Uh, but let me give you guys some ideas for tomorrow. All right, let me give you guys some ideas for tomorrow. Micron, right? We've been talking about Micron for a little bit here, right? It still has not taken out its earnings highs. You can see here, it's gotten rejected off the earnings highs now twice in the last two weeks. Maybe tomorrow, maybe tomorrow it finally reclaims the earnings highs. Keep an eye on that. Uh, Taiwan Semiconductor, again, another semiconductor name, uh, is now successfully back-tested tested the five-day moving average. Let's see, you know, let's see if, if TSM wakes up uh, in the next couple of days and starts attacking its earnings highs. Again, that's how stocks start making their next move. But, you know, so let's definitely keep an eye on TSM. Shopify, right? Highs close in this whole formation. Shopify, you know, looks ready. If it could start confirming the top of the range here, maybe this thing wakes up. Um, what else, what else, what else we want to talk about? 
And look at Square, right? Look at Square as well. Square today came back off the deep depths of hell, reclaimed back the 50-day moving average. It just needs to get above this whole channel right here. If they could reclaim this range here, maybe this thing wakes up as well. As we're talking, this SMSI is just going out of its mind. It's up another $8 since I started this, uh, this video. Anyway, guys, crazy market. Stay patient. Don't chase. Uh, don't beat yourself up if you miss something. It's it's extraordinary circumstances right now. Eventually, this will end. Uh, it, every bull market really does. But again, one day at a time, one trade at a time, and you won't get caught with your pants below your ankles. Guys, God bless everybody. Have a great day, and I will see you on the video tomorrow night. Take care.